Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Careertainment. And today we will take up a sensitive topic, um, sensitive at least for some of you. Uh, so you've lost your job. So what do you do next? I have found many who are faced with this situation kind of uh, freeze and don't know what to do next. Uh, and many of them actually waste themselves and which is sad. Um, uh, so I thought we'll do a short video on what to do if you're faced with that uh, scenario. And job losses are uh, not very uncommon nowadays. They're happening all around us. Uh, they're happening all over the world. And I'm sure all of us know at least somebody in our friend circle or in our family uh, who's lost uh, his or her job and we're trying to help them out um, in the best possible manner to tide over uh, this difficult scenario, right? So I thought we'll do a short video with some tips and um, perspectives um, that might help uh, some of them, right? So let's look at what to do when you're faced with this situation of being handed over a uh, pink slip. So the first thing that you do not do is stop blaming everybody around you and be bitter, right? Because that bitterness and negativity and, uh, you know, blaming everybody is only putting that that precious energy that you have in a negative quadrant. What I've seen is people start blaming um, their parents, sibling, family, friends, college, professors, government, everybody. Um, uh, don't do that because it's not helping you in any way. Uh, just focus on the task in front of you and put your um, energy in a positive quadrant and start working from there. Now, assuming that you've been, uh, your job uh, loss has happened because of, uh, not because of any interpersonal or emotional reasons, uh, it's most likely it's happened because of commercial reasons. It makes sense. And if you have the opportunity to go back and discuss it with the person who's handed you that pink slip, do that. Normally, the three commercial reasons that are very clear, either you're not helping the company make money or you're not helping the company save money, or you're not helping the company spend its money in the most efficient and uh, productive manner. These are uh, broadly the three reasons why job losses and redundancies uh, happen. It makes sense uh, to kind of have a discussion and find out the pinpointed reasons. Uh, you know, it might help you negotiate right there and then, or if nothing else, it'll help you giving your perspective about uh, your assignment and about your job, so do that. And if you have a chance to uh, discuss, then maybe you can take that next step and say that, hey, uh, I'm ready to do a temporary gig or, uh, you know, uh, maybe you could add on one more role uh, or I could even uh, think of uh, reconsidering my salary uh, to tide over these difficult times for the company and myself. And uh, um, there's nothing wrong. Don't let your ego come into play because um, all that matters is you and the company and your job. Yeah, and that's critical, right? So that's important. Now, assuming that that doesn't happen and you find yourselves at home um, uh, with that pink slip, so what do you do next? Uh, number one, as casual as it may uh, seem, uh, start exercising yeah um, you know pick up those gym boots start running cycling yoga pranayam whatever works for you start exercising yeah and if you've been already into fitness then increase your frequency and intensity because hey, it's been scientifically proven that you know the dopamine release actually helps so get on with your exercise don't give it any gap you know in fact increase the frequency and intensity it helps the second, again, it, 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 it may sound casual, but uh, start uh, doing some creative work to get that creative juices uh, flowing. It's very important. Pick up that sketch pen, a sketchbook, a drawing easel, whatever comes normally to you. Don't worry about uh, the quality or, you know, you're not going to be Pablo Picasso tomorrow. So, uh, you know, do that. Uh, it only helps you to, you know, get your mental furrows aligned in the most creative manner. These two things, uh, as casual as they may sound, are very important. In fact, at the end of the video, I'll try to narrate a small story, uh, which you all will like and, uh, you know, highlight the importance of this. Once done, now you start making your CV, but this time with only one difference. Don't make the CV um, as if you're applying to somebody else or some other job. Make a CV as if you're applying to yourselves. 
and uh, that brings out your skills and try to tangibilize it um, in the manner that we discussed earlier in in the perspective of either saving the money or earning money or spending resources in the best possible manner uh, do that it will help you um, really really identify your real skill set and as you go forward that's the third thing that you do once you're done, you start now thinking about what's your next step and now start thinking outside of a paradigm because uh, most people I've seen when they lost a job uh, from a particular company or an industry, they go back looking for the same job, the same industry, the same company. Uh, you know, it's an opportunity to think outside because most likely uh, if things were all right, then you wouldn't have uh, lost that job or your job wouldn't have been redundant, right? So start thinking out of the box. Uh, for example, why a job at all? Why not uh, uh, an entrepreneurship or self-employed professional? Don't worry, there are millions of people doing that and surviving just fine. So, uh, you know, uh, there's no special uh, writ, uh, written over there that you are gonna fail, you know? So you can also try and you can also succeed. Try that, a temporary gig, and we'll come to that a little later. Second, why the same industry? Uh, you know, after all, you're a functional expert. So if you're in FMCG, why another FMCG? You could look at, you know, B2B or, you know, if you're in consumer durable somewhere else, you could even look at ITES. And now um, the ITES uh, sector is looking at process experts from every domain. So if you're a, if you're a process expert, you can go and, uh, you know, approach them and say that, hey, I can help you in developing uh, a product or an application that you're working on. So try this out of the box thinking, apply the entire world is open for you. Third, many people try and go for the same type of companies. You know, uh, uh, my, my company was thousand crores or a couple of billion dollars. So I'll go for a similar company. No need, you know, you could even go to a smaller company in the same industry. In fact, uh, I have done a video in the past, which uh, many have liked, uh, you know, how a smaller company can actually be uh, a big advantage uh, to what you do to try going to a smaller company it might help and finally why the same role the same level the same salary you know a, a very interesting um, example comes to me from the game of golf when you are caught when your ball is in the hazard or in the woods um, you know the good golfers uh, not bad ones like me the good golfers chip out on the fairway and then go for the next shot so uh, it doesn't matter you can you can always compromise on the role and the uh, level and the salary and and move you know many people are hung up that all right i you know i my job was 100 bucks and i i need to at least get on to 100 bucks don't 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 look at that things have changed right so think out of the box now after you do this thinking, now start acting. Uh, uh, most of this, this kind of thinking happens because of, uh, uh, because of what the world will say, you know. Uh, quite honestly, the world doesn't have any time to think about you. Only you have the time to think about yourself. So don't bother about what the world is going to say. You, you just think out of the box. Once you've done this, start acting. Now, what, what do you do? You know, one is, uh, except for, um, let's say, your um, children's school fees for those of you who have kids everything every other expense and everything else can be worked on the first thing is that uh, cut those unnecessary expenses I'm sure all of you will do that you know those those impulse buys those um, luxury purchases all those kind of things just stop it stop going out for you know a dinner every third day or something like that so that's the first thing that you do second is Try um, doing a garage sale. There are so many stupid things that you've accumulated over years. Uh, you'll be amazed when you put it on OLX or something like that. You know, it, you'll find willing takers uh, and it'll add a little buffer into your bank. So start doing that. Do a garage sale. It helps you declutter not just your house, but also declutter your body and mind. You know, just get rid of all that uh, uh, useless accumulation that you've done uh, in the past. Third, look at transitioning capex to opex you know a lot of money is stuck in capex at home uh, at a very very senior level or at a serious level for example um, uh, why a, why a couple of cars at home or why a car at home when there can be an uber or auto rickshaw or whatever that is right so move your capex um, uh, to opex fourth that cv that you made about your skill 
don't worry even while you're applying your job put that skill of yours on a gig platform like a like a urban clap or something like that you know you'll be surprised it's not just carpenters and plumbers who who are on these kind of platforms even knowledge workers are there so you know put your skill set who knows uh, you know you might just get that um, um, uh, demand for the skill that you have and you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised and uh, some of you may even end up making a lot more than what you are but 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 do that next check your ecosystem check the ecosystem of your uh, company you know upstream downstream vendors there are so many people don't just look at the company look at the upstream downstream the entire ecosystem around them and you'll find apply everywhere and and don't be rigid uh, about your level and salary and everything so start looking at your um, ecosystem Next, look at the process. Yeah, look at you're a, you're a process expert, right? Like we discussed earlier, uh, uh, look at uh, uh, process similarities in other industries. Maybe there is a process similarity that you have in, let's say, an FMCG industry, which might be very useful in, let's say, the education industry, or the education industry will be good in your hospitality industry, and so on and so forth. So look at process similarity and widen your search. Uh, that will uh, help then next look at functional similarity you know you're a marketing expert you're a finance expert after all uh, your expertise with a little bit of uh, getting tuned to to the particular industry can be useful uh, at many places so all i'm trying to say is start widening your horizon uh, as much as possible and start telling people everybody around you including your family first that you know hey i'm in this situation so i'm going to be doing this uh, it helps so uh, these are the couple of steps that uh, you should take and I hope uh, um, it helps and I'm sure uh, you'll find a job soon because uh, I hope all of you um, are successful in finding an alternative I know it's very difficult uh, stay connected uh, I pray that all of you find whatever you feel is right for you all the best take care don't lose heart hold tight stay connected and subscribe and share if you feel it's going to help others. Bye for now. Take care.